compliance with the Open Public Meetings Law, I wish to state that on May the 25th, 2018, notice of this meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board, mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel Ledger, the Herald Times, and followed by the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is being video recorded up until the closed session portion of this meeting and will be available on UTTV Channel 97 and on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. I would ask all to rise for the salute of the flag. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Barbara, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Here. Mr. Coggins? Here. Mr. Corson? Present. Mr. Young? Absent this evening? Mayor Colombo? Here. Four members present? All right, would someone like to make an approval, a motion to approve the minutes for May 14th, both regular meeting and closed session A and B minutes? <coughs> Second. Do I have to stop? Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried with four in favor. All right. Uh, Scott, do you have anything for us this evening? Yes, two things. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor Committee. Uh, just wanted to report um, for the final time, at least for the month of April, uh, that our brush collection has been completed as of today. Uh, after an additional month and a half that we added to our normal April uh, collection process uh, because of the March storms, as you know, um, and the increased tonnage, which I reported, uh, that was collected by our Public Works Department. Uh, as of today, uh, we have officially uh, completed uh, the, the April, the official April uh, collection process. Um, that is to say, though, however, that uh, uh, as far as compost is concerned, as long as you bag uh, or provide a can, compost <coughs> will still be collected. Loose leaf collection, as a reminder, uh, that has ended uh, as far as April is concerned, and it will pick back up in November, uh, and that is for loose leaf. Uh, but if you place, uh, once again, uh, bags or uh, cans out there, uh, we will collect through the period. Uh, for the different uh, specified areas, and all that is available on our Upper Township website under Public Works. Uh, there's a complete list of all the different uh, time periods uh, and days that uh, uh, these type of items are picked up. Um, the other thing I wanted to report uh, uh, in my absence uh, uh, at last meeting, um, it was a, a letter that we received from Cape May County MUA uh, and <coughs> involving their uh, Intermediate processing facility. It's a year in review for the uh, year of 2017. Um, and there were two significant developments as a result of this report. Um, one was uh, less impactful than the other, uh, and that uh, being that, uh, um, uh, that, uh, that one development was the announcement of Republic Services Incorporated's acquisition of uh, re community holdings. Um, which basically uh, is the KJ uh, County Municipal Utilities Authority's IPF or Intermediate Processing Facility. They have taken that over. That in itself is not too much of an impact. Um, the second one is more impactful. This was the recycling industry, uh, was China's uh, February 2017 announcement to the World Trade Organization detailing a new campaign, which they refer to as the National Sword. Uh, 2017, and it goes on to explain uh, the domestic recovery industry <coughs> that they were cracking down on import permit fraud within China and illegal importing of scrap uh, plastics. So essentially, what does that mean to us and to our uh, intermediate processing facility? Um, uh, basically, the authority and its IPF operator have had uh, its share of difficulties navigating through the complexity of the uh, uh, interconnected global recycling uh, uh, economy and the challenges that are presented. But overall, um, with what our township uh, was provided, uh, has provided to this process, um, uh, is basically that uh, uh, it's resulted in a, uh, for that particular calendar year, uh, a, a net positive material revenue of uh, 
$279,122.80, which will end up in a rebate check, which uh, we have uh, basically signed the, uh, the uh, invoice for from them of $24,316.58. Um, and basically, where we fit within the, uh, the county is uh, we are a little over 27% um, as far as our activity is concerned, and the county's uh, <coughs> percentage is a little over 23%, 27.47%, and the uh, county's uh, diversion rate is 23.93%. So uh, we're doing a great job as far as recycling is concerned. Um, can we? make efforts and we are making efforts to do better to increase that percentage to upwards of around 50 percent um, uh, we are working toward those goals as well so i just wanted to report that to the committee um, and uh, that is all okay. barbara nothing to report this evening sir thank you daniel nothing at this time but we do have a couple items for closed session okay Paul. I'm going to keep the tradition going. Uh, nothing for the meeting. Thank you. And nothing from me either. All right. Mr. Coggins. Uh, nothing to report, but I wanted to pass on a comment from, a, from one of our uh, taxpayers. He bumped into me on the street and asked me if I'd been by the intersection of Randolph Avenue and Route 9. And I, I said I hadn't. And uh, he indicated that there's a pothole there that's so big that there's a lawn a chair, chair and a traffic cone sitting in it. I saw it this evening. Can we get something done about that? And we have. Uh, we looked into it as of today because I received the same report. Um, it's, it's more than a pothole. Uh, it's requiring an actual patch. So we have to go back in and uh, patch that entire area. Uh, and that has been uh, worked on uh, hopefully before the end of this week. But well, basically, I mean, there's, there's one cone out there, and we, we added more cones okay. for the city. Yes. And then and a, a, chair chair chair. Chair. a white panel. Yeah, chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did see that picture. And there was also a comment made about the, the and I, I'm not even sure if this is an intersection. I, I was intended to look it up, and I didn't. But he said, uh, where Allendale and Hollandberry intersect. Does that right. make it? Same one. Got that? That's the second one. Okay. We admittedly, once again, because of the March storms and the work that we had to do there, we have been slightly backed up with potholes uh, and also street sweeping. Um, so, but just to let everybody know that we are starting to get back to that on regular schedule, uh, and these, these jobs will be, be completed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Thank you. All right, Deputy Mayor Baum. And with that being said, I urge all of our residents to report any problems that they see. Go ahead and report. Okay. Are we, you know, in terms of reporting, um, I understand that we are set up on our website that we can make these reports for any type of uh, hazards within the township right across the Upper Township website. That is, that is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, well, same location, uh, uppertownship.com. Go to the uh, public works section. Uh, of the website and under there you'll see the pop <coughs> Mr. Corson. Thank you, Ms. Brandt. Um, I do have one thing. The rescue squad is having a back bay benefit, it's called. It's obviously uh, a beef and beer kind of thing. It's going to be held on the uh, Takao Inn, the back outside deck area. Adults for $25. Under 20 is $15, and they are also raffling off. What, what's the date? June 3rd. They are also raffling off and having a drawing for a kayak. They're only selling 200 tickets for it. It's an ocean, uh, a fishing kayak with a fishing pole and lures and oh, everything you need to go fishing. Life vest, even. So. How much tickets? Uh, the tickets for the kayak are 15 apiece, and Mr. Potter has them. If he doesn't have them tonight, he'll get them available. And the beef and beer is 25. <coughs> Tell your kids about it, man. There you go. Get them out of the house one day. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the only thing I I will say is, um, uh, you know, we had the beaches open uh, this weekend, uh, and we actually have. Uh, I wouldn't say skeleton staff, but we have a, a staff uh, that will be there throughout the week. Uh, there's 
I believe, three guards that are at the station that are on call, and there's also a couple stands that are open. And we'll continue to expand the operations as we get closer to summertime. Um, there's tryouts for lifeguards on June the 9th. Uh, and so, the, any anyone knows any uh, individuals that are interested in trying out for the lifeguards? We have a number of positions open this year, so um, it, it it should be a you know a good opportunity for some some folks to uh, to sign up or you know, go through the tryout process. Um, and then uh, yesterday, Curtis Ed and I uh, joined uh, in some of the sermon. Um, Ceremonies that the VFW and American Legion uh, put in place. Um, they did change uh, their route, um, I guess for the better, although it caused some confusion because they started very early. Uh, when it started ahead of the river instead of in the Beezy's Point area, we were caught up to them a couple times. And admittedly, I set the alarm off here at the building uh, when they stopped here. Um, so, uh, although I have the code now all taken care of, um, so, uh, but I, I just wanted to acknowledge that, acknowledge uh, Osprey Point for having a really nice ceremony. They had um, some, some folks in that, that spoke, uh, one was from the Air Force, um, and then we were able to uh, present that resolution actually to my father. So, uh, it was, a, it was, it was a, a nice morning, and I'm sure it will get back to the tradition of you know, 15 stops that originally was in place in the past. So, so that's all I have. Resolution. <coughs> all right, item number one. Rejecting all bids received for re-roofing of municipal buildings and authorizing the township to re-advertise for bids. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Cog? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number two, authorizing the award of a contract with True Green LP for recreation field maintenance. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Authorizing the Township Buffer to enter into a new leasing management agreement with the County of Cape May for the land notice block 383 lot 1 and block 247 lot 21. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Four. Authorizing the Upper Township 4th of July celebration event to be held on July 4th, 2018 at Amanda's Field and setting the vendor and participant fees. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Five, authorizing the mayor to sign the municipal excess liability joint insurance <coughs> fund minimum technology standards. <coughs> Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. <coughs> Item number six. Accepting the surety bond for Tuckahoe Sand and Gravel for the mining operation known as Tuckahoe Sand and Gravel. <coughs> block 247, lots 4, 9, and 10. Block 248, lots 1 to 8. Block 249, lot 1, and block 453, lot 2. And authorizing the release of the existing surety. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number seven, accepting the surety bond for Hanson Aggregates for the mining operation known as Julie's Pit, Block 414, Lot 44, and authorizing the release of the existing surety. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. <coughs> Item eight. Item number eight, adopting the form, the form of the New Jersey Tort Claims Act questionnaire required to be utilized by claimants for the filing of notices of tort claim against the Township of Upper in accordance with the provisions of the New Jersey Tort Claims Act, NJSA 59 colon 8-6, and designating Qualinks as the agent 
for the Township of Upper to provide the questionnaire to all the claimants and to receive the completed questionnaire from the claimants. Motion to adopt. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. The motion is carried. Item number nine, authorizing a shared services agreement with the Cape May, with the County of Cape May for heavy equipment fleet maintenance. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. The motion is carried. Item number 10, appointing additional 2018 season beach patrol personnel. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. The motion is carried. Item number 11, appointing 2018 season beach patrol personnel contingent upon background clearance. Move the resolution. Second. And just to explain this, um, we have, this is really to address uh, the incoming rookie guards that we're trying out. Uh, we don't have a meeting uh, until very close to July 4th. And so, or right after July 4th, so there wouldn't be time to have the tryouts and, you know, have these guys start their, their with, without the contingency. But the contingency also is upon, you know, clearing. We're going to need a resolution for those. Uh, this is really the only one individual that's in that category now because we don't know who passed the test. Right. So. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggin? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 12, finding the existence of certain unfit building conditions in the township and authorizing the introduction and adoption of an ordinance pursuant to NJSA 40 colon 48-2.5. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggin? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 13 under ordinances, Introduction and first reading of ordinance number six, 2018, an ordinance amending revised general ordinance, chapter 10, building and housing, and chapter 11, property maintenance of the code of Upper Township. <coughs> if you choose to introduce at this time, if we could have the public hearing on June 25th. Move we introduce ordinance number six, 2008, with the public hearing June 25th? 25th. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. <coughs> Item number 14 under discussion, Upper Township Historical Museum. Paul? Um, yeah, we're at the point uh, now where committee uh, can consider, you know, the, the asbestos obviously has been cleaned up and that <coughs> project is complete. And so now we're back to, um, we had the quotes that we had presented last, I think last year, uh, for to do the architectural services to upgrade the um, the building so that we can, you know, have a definitive plan of scope and then and a cost estimate prepared based on what work needs to be done so that we can make the necessary uh, applications to the county uh, or the state to get some grant funding for some of the rehab. Um, so it's really up to the committee's Do you pleasure. think those architect quotes are still good? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. I've, I've, I've talked to the two lo lo quoters. I still haven't called into the third quoter, but he was significantly higher. Mm -hmm. So I, twice the price. Right. I, I will mention to you that ordinarily this is a, it, since this is a professional services contract, uh, it's along the lines of a, a, of a negotiation or review of proposals that generally occurs in closed session. So if you wanted to get into the details and question the quotes, um, that's probably the appropriate place to have that discussion if you're going to move forward. I think it's a year later and there might be more or less people out of work or well in the middle now. I mean, I don't know. Actually, the, actually people are architects are busier right now than they were last year. There's more work going around. I, I, I wouldn't anticipate finding more proposals. I mean, if the committee wants me to canvas and get additional architect pricing, I can. I think more so than that, um, I think it's important that we all understand that should we go with one of these quotes and there is money budgeted for it, what is the process that we're looking at here? Are we, are we, we're obviously obligated to pay the architect for any work that he does. Do we actually commission the architect and put him to work prior to receiving grant money? 
Yes, because we need him to come up with what the renovations are going to be and what those costs for those renovations are going to be so that we know what we're, what we're shooting for. What we're shooting for and what we're applying for. So, so that we have a more definitive, you know, that you know, it also is more helpful for like the county, especially the county, that they want to see where we're going with it as opposed to, oh yeah, we're going to rehab it and it could cost this much money. You know, I think they want to see a little more uh, plans. Why are we look, looking into grant money to get an architect? I thought we were looking to I, split. I think, I, mean, I think then that gets into the contract negotiation and, uh, and if. But, but, but don't we also, didn't we have an agreement to split the cost for the architect? Yes, and, and I believe the Historic Society has mm -hmm. given the township $10,000 mm -hmm. to, to cover half of the cost of the architect. So the, the architects that we have right now are going to stick to those numbers? Yes. I mean, the, the ones from March of 2017, it's a... And we don't believe it's going to be advantageous for us to go and look for an architect. I, I don't see... I mean, it's, I'm we're busy, but... I think it may be appropriate to at least write I mean, a letter. A year's, a year's a, a extensive period of time. I mean, you agree? I mean, that's a long period of time. It depends. How do you know nobody else got in the business if they want to do it? There's somebody out there that really wants if, if the committee would like me to go and canvas and get two or three more quotes, I'd be happy. So to was this done by RFP, like something like that? I mean, you, we went out, but we did nothing. We just it's done by RFP. It's a professional service right. contract. Uh, it's it's not the highest bid. It's based upon all factors. Okay. It's, it's, an informal, it's an RFP. informal process. It's, it's not if, a, it's not a formal RFP. It's more like an RFQ. And it's right? not a bid. Right. It's more like an RFQ. Right. Yes. I mean, is there? But what I'm saying is, we may just pick up the phone and call three architects. Yes. If it was to get advertised on the website or somewhere, do you think it would maybe get more response? We may. Right. I, I, I can. You, it's it's professional service, so you want to make sure you don't just get the lowest price. You get the I, I, under I the job correctly. Screw But I do think it's prudent to open it up. I mean, we've gone through this process. Um, you know, we were committed after we had, uh, you know, the the asbestos uh, remedy over there, and you know, this was the next step. Obviously, it's taken a little longer than we had anticipated, but. I mean, you know, I, I agree with my colleagues here that it would make sense to open this up a little bit to see, you know, if we can A, get a better price based on, you know, the same type of criteria that's been put in place that we're talking about. Um, but I think that we need to make sure that these folks are willing to do the same, the same amount of work that they had agreed upon a year and, you know, two or three months ago. The, the one comment that I'd like to make is I, I did look at the uh, quotes from the two lowest bidders, so to speak, although bidders is not the right term, the two lowest proposers. And the one who was the lowest actually had the most comprehensive and detailed quote. It was a, it was a pretty impressive job that they did. But, uh, you know, I would, I would most certainly look to confirm in writing that they would be willing to extend that price through the coming year, and uh, you know, if there would be anybody else interested in putting their hat in the ring, we certainly wouldn't turn down a price at this point. I just think it would be wise and prudent to, uh, yeah, because there's people outside of the area that are maybe looking for work too. I mean, you, our area is kind of kicked in right now, but I mean, okay, so should we set a, a deadline when? We'd like to get you know some some of these quotes back by so that this process. I think we advertise it and all that, and probably within the next thirty days get some quotes in. We I mean we can have yeah. we have build, builds and grounds people. We have agents in the construction industry. They can look at a couple of quotes maybe and make a informed recommendation to us. Okay. Do we need a form of motion for that to to uh, okay. motion to direct the engineer to take that action? <coughs> you don't need a resolution. Okay. So you want a motion for that, though? If, if, if that's what the Township Committee wants to do and you want to clarify it, a motion will be good. I'll make that in the form of a motion. I'll second. Mr. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. 
Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. <coughs> Item number 15, engineer's report on the Strathmere bulkhead study. Okay. Mayor Paul. <coughs> Thank you. Um, it's a committee's request that we, we hired a surveyor to go out and survey the entire bulkhead in Strathmere. Um, and determined the, the, the total height of the bulkhead. I then followed up and, and took soundings on the waterward side and took an elevation of the, the height of the bulkhead on the, the landward side and um, just kind of took a survey of what type of bulkheads are just so that we kind of had a feel for what we'd be getting involved in. And looking at it, you know, overwhelmingly, obviously, most of the bulkheads don't comply with the current elevation standard of 7.0. Uh, we had talked about um, looking at going to an elevation possibly 8, which that's what, you know, the target elevation that we realized we'd have to to be two feet lower than the base flood elevation, that that would, um, in the practical sense, break the wave to, to, to be able to move that coastal A zone line from out from, I'll say, around Bayview Drive back to the bulkhead line. Um, to, to try to you know help the property owners out. Um, when you look at replacing that some 3,500 linear feet of bulkhead at around between $2,000 and $2,500 per linear foot for construction costs, that's about what we paid for our last bulkhead uh, in that ballpark range. Uh, you know, you're looking at seven and a half to six million dollars worth of uh, construction costs and you probably would have to budget at least $500,000 in engineering and design costs to get it all surveyed and, and really designed. Um, you know, we could take two steps. You might want to take this to the residents over in Stratford and kind of put this back to them to let them know this information and, and see how they want to proceed. But when you look at, you know, potentially an average cost of you know close to a hundred thousand dollars for some people maybe sixty thousand if it's a narrower lot it may not be financially prudent for a homeowner to to spend that <coughs> just to raise your bulkhead if we're just looking at moving the coastal a zone line when the only true difference for the for the coastal a or an a zone is having breakaway walls that they have to rebuild their homes or not which may, you know, add five to ten thousand dollars to the cost of their construction costs. You know, from an economic standpoint, there's really not a lot of economy to scale there uh, to do that. So, you know, Paul, just a question for you. This analysis it did not include any uh, issues with uh, the five hundred thousand. Obviously, includes permitting. But what about the issues of riparian rights? Oh, that, that does and, not. And the. The docks and the slips, the legalization of all those items. I mean, you can see, and I didn't highlight it, but if you look on the map they prepared, any of the the, the bulkhead is obviously the, the dark dash dot line, but and the the main lots, you know, they're on the landward side. That's the property owner lot. Those boxes that are, you know, that, are, that show a box on the, the waterward side, mm -hmm. those are properties that have repairing. Uh, grants or, or license, you know, so actually grant, you know, they're actually repairing grants. So a significant, I, I would say less than half have the repairing rights. Correct. Mm. Now they may have tight lanes licenses. Some of them may have tight lanes licenses. So you might be able to get rid of, you know, maybe another third of those non-grant so, so license licenses. So the task committee understands this. There are <coughs> significant individual um, challenges to properties that do not either have a license from the state to operate their docks and slips or a grant to use the land such as an ownership beyond the the uh, 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 landward side of the bulkhead all right um, they would have to get that before you could do any of this work and this so third you thing, say, you're talking about the one the, the ones that are and, that, and that's a lengthy process a that's expensive you have to buy the land from the state that's a lengthy process that's expensive for each individual property owner beyond that the average height of the non-conforming bulkhead now is what? I mean, the, the average height of the non-conforming? Just give me an average. The S <coughs> five. 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 So what we're doing is we're adding two and a half to three feet to the new bulkhead, which means that if your grade 
is on the landward side, a foot below the height of the bulkhead now, you're going to be four feet, you're going to be looking at a four foot wall mm -hmm. to get over to get to your docks and slips. And, we ha and I had two property owners that just are completing their bulkhead construction and I talked to both property owners before they started construction, talking about <coughs> this process that we're doing that the committee was potentially looking at, raising the ordinance requirement to help, you know, to benefit the property owners and that there could be a future project to, to, to raise everything. And they were initially going to have their contractor raise the bulkhead. There wasn't going to be any real increase in cost to them because, you know, at the time that they're going to do it. Um, however, when they saw how high that was going to be in relationship to the ground, uh, they decided not to raise their bulkhead at this point. And they didn't raise the elevation of the house either, right? They didn't raise the elevation. No, they weren't raising the elevation of their house. So if you can't raise the elevation of your house, you know, you're going to lose the view. Well, I think these homes were already, I mean, they might have had some at grade deck, but. So what <coughs> did they build these two new bullpets? Excuse me? What elevation? <coughs> they met our, they, our standard. They're like just above seven. They didn't go to the extra foot. They didn't go the extra foot to go to eight to meet the. They, they still have a, a wall, but it's not as high a wall. But my, my point is, is a significant change in practical effect to these homeowners when it occurs. And it could be significant individual expense to get the rights uh, from the state to maintain the, the docks and the slips if they don't already have them. And if, even if they already have them, they may not be permitted correctly because it's not uncommon for people on the Bayfront to be approved for, let's say, two slips and have seven. And that would all have to go back to approve for. Well, I think uh, so. It, I, I think in the near future we'll probably have to sit down with folks over in Strathmore because this originated by a request from residents and, and I believe the Strathmore Approval Association to take a look at this to see if it's feasible to do it. <coughs> we had we had progressed to the point that we would certainly research it to see, you know, what. This process in, entailed in, into trying to put in, and then also we had discussion on potentially bonding the money and having the uh, individual residents reimburse it over, you know, or 10-year or 15-year period, whatever, you know, it, it works within. But the fact that there are a number of homeowners that will be could be potentially adversely affected beyond just the wall, you know, that, that, that well, creates it, another issue. It's not uncommon. Everybody where needs one to neighbor goes, the yeah. Like where, where one neighbor goes in to legitimize their docks and slips, put a new bulkhead in, and um, the DEP may go down and inspect it, and all of a sudden the next neighbor next door gets a notice. By the way, you're you're not legal. You're not appropriate. You have to. You don't have the riparian rights. Um, it happens sometimes. Not all the time, but it happens. No, and I will comment. The township has five street ends that have bulkheads. Uh, two of them. Um, meet the, the elevation eight standard. Uh, actually, one of them is at the elevation seven standard. And where's that at on this map here? Uh, or actually, actually one meets there's one meets the elevation seven standard. That's at Willard Avenue by the Duval. It's okay. on map one of sheet one of two. And then uh, obviously the one that we just constructed at Webster Avenue. That's at eight point three. So that's above. <coughs> Um, the one that was constructed at Whittier, um, that is at elevation 6.2. And then um, at Putnam Avenue, that's at 4.8. Uh, and that's actually getting into a condition. When I was out there, I was able to do, it was actually low tide, so I was able to inspect it. That's getting to a point where we're going to need to actually start putting that in the program to have that replaced anyway, because it's a timber, old timber bulkhead. It's going to be, it's in time for replacement. And then the other one, is at Sumner, uh, that's a, uh, and that is at elevation uh, four. So. That's a weird little, is that number seven, is that the township lot? <coughs> number seven. I'm looking at the end of Sumner. I think I'm looking at the end of Sumner. Yeah, that's it. It's like a pie shaped piece. Or am I on the wrong street? I'm one up from Randolph. No, that's uh, Sherman. That's, oh, that's Sherman. Okay. That's not a street end. 
that's a lot. That, okay. That's a lot. That's actually a lot. That, that's actually one property there over those two lots, six and seven. Gotcha. Okay, I see where we are. Right. So, so Barbara, I'm going to ask you to try and assist us uh, in contact. Uh, and I know that there's representatives here. But let's um, let's arrange some kind of opportunity to meet before the Strathmore Improvement Association or the Environmental Club, whatever makes sense. And uh, you know, maybe Paul and I and you know, whoever else. I'll probably try to have a meeting instead of meeting with the whole civic organization or group I would probably notice the property owners and tell them if you want to have to I mean yeah, they're the ones that are going to take the hit I mean the people on the ocean aren't paying for it so I mean we could schedule our that I mean and I would agree that we would want to individually notice all of the big <coughs> property owners I'm, I'm, I mean obviously anybody from the public would be welcome to attend but I think we will want to make sure that we let all of the Bayfront I'm not going to know that because we're talking about the book. A huge assessment on your property. I mean, right. mm -hmm. If you're going to assess my property, hundred thousand, I'd want to know about it. All right. Well, I mean, before we get to that point, I mean, this was just, you know, a continuation of, of you know, conversation and you know what we've had from the past. And you know we wanted to do a survey to see exactly what we were looking at. So now we have a better idea of cost. I mean, we couldn't come up with any estimate or anything just based on hearsay and what we were you know, talking about yet. We literally had to find out you know what was there. So we've done that. And but, now the next step would be to try and figure out how to, to have a meeting. Uh, you know, my concern is is that you know this affects a lot of people. So if we were to have a meeting, I mean, I'm not sure that there's a meeting place big enough to support. I mean, usually the meeting's over there at the firehouse on the second floor, and I'm not sure that that can handle the capacity of that, but you know, we can talk to people and see what, you know. I mean, what would a, like the new bulkhead was just putting in seven feet. We're, we're talking about changing it to eight. I mean, we can't just bolt something on top of it, right? Well, the, the, I mean, the one we just built at Webster, that's... that's no, 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 the, 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 the people that just built the homes. <coughs> the homes? I mean, no, you can't. I mean, if you're if you're close, what you can do is you can add cap material. In other words, say your bulkhead was at seven and a half, it wouldn't be that hard to put a couple of six by sixes on top and get close so that you'd be above eight. Okay, but they have a, they're at seven and we're looking for eight. Correct. You mean they can't retrofit the top of those? Most of those most of, those, most of both clubs, you can, not unless you kept trying to. But at that, at the most you're going to be able to get would be, I'll say, two six by sixes because you put. Two six by kind of make a pyramid, put two down and then one on top. So in other words, use three six by sixes. That's about as most that you're going to be able to, and that's going to get you about ten and a half inches. Okay. Well, what I'm saying is maybe I mean, is there anybody else on the base side doing like, construction or thinking about building something? Yeah, every, every, and that's part of because everybody has to get a bulkhead permit now. I I get a chance to talk to them. We need to change our ordinance like yesterday if we're looking for eight foot instead of letting somebody within the last couple of months build one. At a foot under lock. Well, that, I mean, that we were also waiting to have this discussion to know, hey, what to what extent are we having? But that, I mean, that is something. I think, we'll but, but there again, are we? You, you're putting, you're putting that, putting that it, extra foot on there is going to put because not only that, that's an extra foot of <coughs> raise my steps over. Whereas if I'm if I'm just going, if they're building a new house, though. And they're building a whole new bulkhead. At that point, now we're going to go in. Let's say we improve this project and do this project. In a year and a half from now, we're going to go ahead a foot to a bulkhead that was just built. That's almost ludicrous. Now, these two people that just put in their bulkhead, they weren't replacing their house. They just replaced their bulkhead. I and they shoot them at the eight, and they met today's standard is seven, seven foot. Correct. Well, today's standard needs to be if we're looking for an eight foot bulkhead there, we need to raise our standard eight foot. And obviously they don't care about their insurance because they they would have you know, but now we're going to be well, there is no th th this this has no effect on changing the coastal A zone has no effect on their insurance rates whatsoever. In other words, the construction code is just the construction. construction on a new building or right. substantially right. renovated building, and, and it's nowhere near as significant as the bulkhead. Yeah, there's there's no the impact difference. on insurance. 
<coughs> but but you're right. If you want, it's, if it, if the rule is going to be eight, it should be eight. We have a bulk of deterioration ordinance that says if your bulk is deteriorated, you got to put a new one in. Well, they put a new one in at seven, and then we're going to come out. Yeah. So I, I I don't know what Paul's hesitancy is. Well, it, it depends on. Well, the, 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 you may get a majority of residents that don't want it at eight because they're not looking. You know, that, that 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 isn't. Going to protect them. And why are we even having a discussion? If they don't want an eight-foot bulkhead, I mean, why am I going to build something that's inadequate at six foot or seven foot? Well, I mean, why why even have a bulkhead? All let's let's is, go back to a beach. All I was saying is you might want to have this discussion because I think the residents came in and were talking to us without all the facts, and I think they were listening to innuendo and and hearsay and not knowing all the facts. Well, I think the, the concern was that they were going to have to spend, because of being in a an nasal, zone, they were going to have to spend additional money in any case of, you know, construction as a result of renovation or uh, rebuilding. I don't know, I mean, that's, but if the committee wants to change it, we can, we can, I mean, that's a, it's an easy ordinance change to uh, have an ordinance revision at the next meeting for introduction, we can have that. Well, I, I don't. I, well, there, there's no sense of bringing that up at this point until we have the actual meeting with the residents and, and, and take it from there. I mean, it's, it's the cart before the horse. I mean, we can we, we can do that all we want, um, but you know, I, I I think residents' input over on the Bay Area is important. But if they're looking for a because window. I mean. I, I mean, for the very beginning, I said, I, I want to know what this actually is going to cost, but, what it's but actually going to cost the residents. These, you know? Remember why there is the push for the eight foot. The push for the eight foot was, was because there was an outcry about the coastal A, uh, a, a zone. Yes. And the concern was, how can you get us out of the coastal A zone? Two issues. One, the coastal A zone wasn't as severe as initially thought by the residents. It's really a construction style on a substantially renovated house or a new house, and it doesn't affect their insurance rates, okay? However, we can get you out of the coastal A, hence the eight foot bulkhead and do all this other stuff. So what Paul's trying, I think, to say is that you may not want to go to the extreme of get out of the coastal A if the neighbors and Strathmere residents say, now that we see what the situation is, maybe we don't need an eight foot bulkhead. Let's go somewhere in between with your current one seven, whatever, and we'll do it piecemeal and we'll see what we can do. But you won't know that until you talk to the folks from Strathmere. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they have to have full disclosure as far as what the ramifications are gonna be if they do that. Yes, now, the, that's Coastal A. Getting a good bulkhead that's more than four foot high will affect the flooding as well. That's a different story, correct? Was it was yes. it part of the discussion is that they were looking for consistency <coughs> because you know the, the water rushes to the lowest point and that you know when when you know someone has a even seven foot bulkhead and someone next to them has a four foot the flooding is still going to occur because the water is going to rush to the to the lowest amount of, of um, bulkheads that the water can, can pass through. And yeah. most and most of the nuisance floodings are between three and, and four. That's where most of our nuisance flooding elevation comes into. If we're looking at seven and eight, then we're in Jonas Sandy. You know that's when we're looking at those flood heights. Um, so. You know, those are the massive storms that it's going to come around because don't forget the flooding to a lot especially on the the southern end of Bayview Drive it's if you think about where the boat ramp is there's that block and a half on the east side of Bayview Drive that is all marsh so the flooding comes up there is no bulkhead over there so you know but, the, but the marsh yeah there's no bulkhead but the marsh actually helps and breaks up way back <coughs> I'm not, yeah we're not talking about the coastal lake. It, now we're switching the discussion back to, okay, do you, do you, but we don't need, I think what I'm saying is, we don't need elevation eight to stop the nuisance flood. What we need is all the bulkheads to at least be up to our current ordinance, and, and that would most definitely stop the nuisance, or curtail the nuisance the flooding, because you're, you're still going to have it, because there's other ways and spots for the flooding to occur. 
All right, so Barbara, we will figure out a way in which you contact the neighbors or the residents could be affected, and then try and set up some sort of meeting, whether it's in Strath, Merrimack, that would probably be the best place if you think we can handle the, you know, the, the amount of crowd that is going to be coming to this meeting. Okay. Sure. Because it's easier for a few of us to go over there than have everybody come over here, obviously. So. I'd like to make okay. a suggestion. Absolutely. Make this color code so that when you go down the line, you can tell right away who's below, who's below grade and who's far. I can do that. <laughs> I thought it was your partner. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're we're going to put this you know on a continuance, like you know, unfinished business or whatever. All right. Okay. All right. Moving on. Payment of the bills. I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and then incorporated into the full minutes of the meeting. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Forsman? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Uh, there is one report from our municipal departments, so that's the municipal court. Um, that, that report will be available upon request tomorrow at the clerk's office, but I'll make a motion to accept that report. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Forsman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. So we have reached the, the point in the meeting where we can open it up and accept public comment. If you'd like to address the Township Committee, now is the time to do so. Please go to the podium, state your name <coughs> and your address and your reasons for addressing the Township Committee. <coughs> uh, my name is Elaine Holsenbach and uh, my Strathmere address is 29 Sumner Road. Um, last year, I came with several other Strathmere residents to discuss the glass dropped by the recycling truck, as well as the hours of operation of the Sea Isle shuttle bus. I also addressed the committee on the beach access for handicapped persons. I was told at that meeting that beach path mats were on the agenda for next year. That is now this year. There are new mats. I was told by Mr. Dietrich in an email that Upper Township was compliant with one handicapped access at the point and one in Whale Beach. To own a home in Strathmere and pay taxes personally for over 60 years, as this was my parents' home first, and they paid the taxes, to be told to have to drive to the point or Whale Beach an attempt to even find a parking spot, let alone have any handicapped person so inconvenience is ludicrous. The ADA very specifically states that there must be equal access for handicapped persons. This is not equal. This is bare minimum. Brush it off, wipe your hands, and forget it. I have a wheelchair here tonight. I will challenge the mayor and Mr. Dietrich to w use this wheelchair for one week. Taking turns attempting to negotiate the dunes, both independently riding in it or being pushed by another person for assistance. When the week is up, I will come for the chair. I believe that you each need to experience what it is like to want to enjoy the beach, but cannot, due to the soft sand and steep hills of the dunes. It is only fair to use Strathmere taxes for Strathmere purposes, not to pay mainland bills. I have paperwork here for two companies that manufacture mats. I believe that either company will fulfill the need and that every street, every street, should have the mats from the street to the beach for the true letter of the law, which is equal access. Thank you.
Would anyone else like to address the Township Committee? Ted Kingston, Strathmere. On, on the bulkhead issue, I guess first of all is is the eyes you're looking at this like there's what's practical today but with things changing so rapidly I think you want to look at the situation as how it's going to be 20 and 25 years from now you know, <coughs> hopefully we're all still here 25 years from now and you want to look back at the decisions you made now and that they were good decisions and then when it gets to the actual ordinances and, and there's, there's like two different issues here. There's the bulkhead height and then there was, you know, you're doing the survey and all to look at possibly building the bulkhead the whole way. Let's look at just the bulkhead height. For a majority of the town, uh, maybe not a majority, for the northern half of the town, there's absolutely no reason why the, the bulkhead height can't be eight feet. It's, it's like a no-brainer. The issues in conversations and all, the issues with some of the residents and talking with Paul and all, is that in the southern part of town, in some areas, it's, it's really low. So if you built, built the bulkhead to eight feet, it would be very high off the ground. Part of the reason in asking for the survey was to know how high above the ground the bulkhead would be in the lowest spots. But I mean, at, to me, a good solution would be to make the ordinance for eight feet and in areas where the bulkhead would be whatever number we determine above the ground that you would only have to be at seven feet. So then in the lower areas of town where it would, the bulkhead would end up being really high, mm -hmm. you could make that an exception and have that at seven, but have the rule be to eight. And although that's not a perfect solution, it's a step forward. And I don't think we, we can't afford to discuss it forever. We need to make whatever advances we can. Um, you know, there's more, I'm not weighing in positive or negative on building a bulkhead the whole way. That may be a good idea, but like, let's see if we could push forward on getting from seven to eight and maybe make some exceptions so that, you know, we don't have residents bulking at it. Um, well, the, the issue is, is the, the process that's in place now, if there's a significant remodel or if they're replacing the, the, the bulkhead, it's, it's, it's right now at seven feet. Right. Um, but if you look at how quickly that's, that process is taking place, it, it really is relatively slow. There, there are individuals that are not ready and very comfortable in, in what they have, you know, on their property at this point. Um, and so, you know, the, the initial idea of this process and how, and you know, we actually got good data now, at least we know what each property is at and what needs to be added to it. But, you know, the issue is, is can we wait whatever the 10 years or 15 years to replace the bulkheads as the properties, you know, were sold or they, you know, are passed on to family members and they, they decide to, to make you know, renovations and things significant enough to raise the bulkhead to what we're talking about. And I understand that point, but back to like Curtis's point, we've had a couple bulkheads built recently. Like, let's up the standard. You know, there's always the next step. I'm not saying take one final step, but the next immediate step, which we, like, let's try and get as much of the town to the eight foot level as we can. And uh, I still don't know the answer. Paul's got the survey now, so maybe we can look. It's like in the worst parts of town, if we went to eight foot, how many feet above the ground would the bulkhead be? Well, there's, we, we keep I mean, saying there, according to this. This has properties with four foot, so you're talking four a, feet higher than what it is now. There, there's a building. Well, there's a building on Bayview that has the bulkhead at 3.76 feet. The problem is the building's over the bulkhead. So what are you going to do? Put the bulkhead in the middle of our living? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I understand the issues, but like, 
from, say, Twisties North, there's absolutely no reason <coughs> for it not to be eight foot up in that area. Bye. Like, none. Not arguing. <laughs> so, I mean, let's take, let's get what we can. Say, if, if, if somebody replaces a bulkhead on the northern half right now, they only got to go to seven. There's no argument for it not to go to eight in the northern half. When and you do nine, things differently in one part of town than another, there has to be a rational basis. The ground level is the rational not, basis. But the, the, there's, no, there's no correlation to the north end is ground is higher than the south end of town. It's, it's up and down. There, there's no correlation. No consistent correlation to... to I'll, be, I'll post the uh, survey online. Okay. You, you can take a look at it. There's, there's spots in the north end that are at elevation three on the ground. I thought that's... It seems to stretch credibility there. <laughs> Say, for instance, you bought one of those houses that has a low bulkhead. You tore the house down and you put the new house up. Yes. What length does your bulkhead have today? Seven. Today it's seven foot. Okay. Well, why not make it eight? So what we're saying, why not make it eight? That's what I was saying. That's where you start. That's your baseline. That's where you start. And then some guy goes, hey, but I ripped half my house apart. Well, guess what? Now you still got to put it at eight. Because you're doing repairs. Well, I mean, you know, I think the next thing is to have a meeting with residents. I mean, should we be at eight? Yes. I I mean, everybody talks about global warming and all this, and the water's rising. Well, to build it at the bare minimum of seven now is ridiculous when in a year we're going to have to, you know. 20 or 25 years from now, we're going to be looking back at seven and saying, what were, what were we thinking? Why, why did they do that? And, and what's going to happen is it, the problem is you have current residents that don't have the resources or the desire to build up their, their grade, nor their bulkhead, nor build a new house. But over time, that land's valuable and it will be developed and it'll yes. be developed with higher grade, higher bulkheads, and higher houses. Mm -hmm. And that's why I can't believe somebody just and that's recently built on a real fact. Yeah. And I mean, eventually, like what Paul did there at Webster, where he put the bulkhead at eight and filled in with dirt and all. That's going to happen. That's going to have to happen. I'm the last guy who wants to make hardships for anybody, but we also have to keep <coughs> wherever there's an opening, like take it and try and get the standards. And I mean, obviously, the people right on the bay that are going to have to pay for the bulkhead, you know, they're, I guess their say is the most important, but the people across the street are going to, you know, the, the town as a whole is, is going to take the, the consequences. So it's, it's uh, I don't know how you weigh it, but I mean, it's more than, you know, the consequences are for more than just the people pay for it. And, and the comparison would be, um, I get the datums mixed up, maybe Paul would know this better, but I mean, the oceanfront bulkhead was built at, I think, 10 foot on the 29 datum, which would make it about eight and a half foot on the, on the newer datum. I, have to, I don't know that off the top of my head, but you're talking about the, at the very north end? That no, I'm talking about the main bulkhead through town. Uh, yeah, I'd have to go look at the plant. I do not know if that's... You, you know, so I guess all I'm saying is in comparison sake, you know, we're not, we're talking about coming up closer to what the oceanfront bulkhead is, not exceeding it or anything by going eight foot. I mean, as it is now, the oceanfront is way up here and the bayfront's down here. We want to try and get the But there, the bay, but uh, there that is the distinction on the oceanfront, the properties that, that front along the, the, I'll say the oceanfront bulkhead, their ground is at that. Elevation seven right. eight, so there that side of the island is high. Right, the base side of the island is very. And, and I don't obviously none of us were here when that bulkhead was built. In, well, I was. Yeah, yeah. 60, it was the sixty two, right? Yeah, it was and that was the late sixty. That was assessed to the property owners, am I right? Uh, I think it was Some graduated it. down the street. Okay, yeah, if you were to the front, ocean front, you paid X amount in the second block. Yeah. There's a statute that provides for that okay, if the municipality wants to do it. I'm just curious to see how it would pay for it. I'll close with, I realize there's a lot of obstacles to this, but um, 
try not to talk yourselves out of it, but to see if we can go keep it moving forward somehow. I mean, I, I'm not totally convinced about building it, but I'm convinced that we need to raise our standards. Right. I, I'm, I'm right with you there. Like, building it is up for discussion. The standards need to, you know, there's going to probably be some legitimate concerns raised, but we got to try and raise the standards, and the sooner the better. Linda Bateman, 14 East Tecumseh, Strathmere, and I'm the president of the Improvement Association. Um, I had a couple of things I wanted to talk about, but first I want to remind you that um, I did mention about Matt's months ago, and I'm stunned that Mrs. Halsenbach implored you to do something about access to the beach, and there was no response. Um, CIL publicly said that they were budgeting for Matt's, and that's what prompted me to ask about ours. And at the time, I was told that um, the one at Williams was, we weren't sure what state they were in until we got them out and got them moving. Um, but, but not to address this issue is, is just, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, it isn't just for wheelchair or handicapped access, although obviously that's a direct benefit. But there are a lot of people who can't go to the beach because they can't walk through the deep sand. And when the wind comes and blows, um, right now at the end of my street, there's there's quite a drop down. So I think it's a legitimate concern, and and I'm interested in hearing your response because there was none. How many maps do we have? There's enough for I think two streets. We just put in brand new crossovers so that are accessible. The we bring new crossovers. Well, the, the one on Vincent is six. Right. So we have six crossovers. Yeah. Wheelchair. I, I, I didn't make any comments because I'm actually dealing with my wife's in a wheelchair too right now. So, so when we put yeah. the crossovers in, did we make any arrangements to put How, how much does a mat cost? What are we talking about? They're probably, I mean, with the size beach that we're having now, it's probably four or five thousand dollars of the crossover. Four to five thousand or forty five thousand? Four four thousand to five thousand. Now, my question is, I mean, we we're talking about the crossovers. There's still steps on the crossovers. No, no, no. So they removed a lot of steps on a lot of the okay. least six of the crossovers. Were you aware of that, that, there's, that we've done crossovers? Where we took the steps out, but you go right on the beach on the way around? But you can't get through the sand. <laughs> well, this, well, what I'm trying to get at is I'm trying to find out how many. Can I, can I yeah, sure, go ahead. Last year, it's not just the wheelchair. Last year, Jim decided he wanted to go to the beach. And I was doing some wash, and he walked down the street. He got to the beach. He tried to go up the sand dune. The sand, of course, was soft. He fell, and he couldn't get up because the sand was so soft. And he already had some back problems. And thank God, two very strong men came by and helped him get up. So it is not just because now, at times, he needs a walker or a wheelchair. Even last year, to negotiate that soft sand was impossible. Let me get this straight, though. We put crossovers in that are made of compact gravel. And the gravel it's not soft sand, correct. But, but the sand eventually... Exactly, but what, did we make any arrangements to put mats at the end of those crossovers so you... It needs to be all the way to the beach. What, what does all the way to the beach mean? it's still soft sand. Wait, that's far up, how far on the beach are you talking? To the water's edge? That would be perfect. We, we only I don't think any town does that. that. Let me give you the legal requirements. We have how many students? You have to do for the ADA what's called a reasonable accommodation. Mm -hmm. All right, and perhaps that equal. it's not equal. It's it's reasonable accommodation. Um, and if they're asking for reasonable accommodation, perhaps something can be arranged with public works in their area, yes. with a chair, whatever, to accommodate uh, these folks. We've done that before. We these have, folks live on every we, street. Are, are you that, aware that we have beach chairs? I'm sorry? Do you, do you, are you aware that we have beach chairs, rollers? 
for handicapped? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And you can call for one if you need one? Every day. You can receive a drop of all the information. We'll make arrangements to get it to you. Well, that's, that's great. That's great for them. How many do you have? Two, two or three. At least three. three. Yeah. Least three. Oh, so if there's four handicapped people, then someone can't go to the beach. I know, but where, where's, where, where do we come to an agreement on how many, how many chairs do we have? The maps would work better. Yeah, but you still need, you, you still need a beach chair because you're going to have to get off the mat to get on the beach. My daughter, my, my, my niece has cerebral palsy. She's been in a wheelchair her entire life. And my sister had to make accommodations to make sure that she had a chair that she could go on the beach with. So unfortunately, she had to buy one of them and she had to buy a beach chair because that's the only way you're going to get around on the beach. Even if you have a mat, you only go so far on the mat, you got to have a beach chair to be go, go to the soft sand. And I think my niece is what, 32 years old now? She's done with her entire life. And we sometimes you have to make adjustments that way. All sometimes all time. Time. And that's what we're doing. We, we took out, how many crossovers? Six crossovers. We took out stairs this year and put ramps in of hard packed gravel so people have access that way. And the hard packed gravel, which was there years ago, the soft sand blows over and the hard gravel. The soft sand's gonna the soft sand's gonna blow over the beach well, mat. Unfortunately that's what I we mean did. it's called it, it's gonna be have to be maintained. In, in just in like fairness, the beach mat would have to be maintained. You know what, in fairness, the bottom of the ramps, it, it it's it's just deep, you know, soft sand. Oh, you absolutely. know, I mean I, I was at the beach this weekend and uh, you know, I mean it, there, it you can go up the ramp, no problem. But you come down the bottom, and there's there's pretty significant it's amount to, of salt It's up sand. to the tops of the fence. It's not, and it isn't. It isn't just people with major handicaps. It's it's the majority of our population. The majority of the taxpayers are are retirees, and it's very very difficult, and it's very heartbreaking to see people who are vital, who walk to the post office, who who just can't handle the and, sand. And that bulb of sand that that blows up at the end of the the. Um, the uh, the crossovers they were all cleaned out before those March yes. storms yeah. and and they wouldn't have placed the, the moving mats over top of those mounds that the, the moving mats actually start at the end of those rings. Would you consider studying this, budgeting for this, admitting that maybe more than one ramp in town Absolutely. Would, would be necessary it's it's under, under the law we're required to have two for the length of beach that we have the army okay, could so we have two beach, could we could we, we have, could we gradually increase more and add additional streets each year could we budget for this sure. it's it's but at the same time you have to understand that we i understand we you can't have, have a map to the beach protection with the beach also that you you know you don't want wave action come down every street end that, that we end up having to cut over Understood. Seattle has one every other block. But they have a map every other block. They have handicap access. I don't know if they have those kinds of maps. No, they, have, they, they have a promenade, but I know Seattle does not have handicap access on all, all the streets. Every other street. No, I, not every other street either. I've spoken to residents. You know, I walk. I walk the promenade all the time. I grew up in that town, and I know that they don't have handicap every other street. There's stairs. <coughs> but they have that. You have to go to the beach house to go to to go go down the ramp. You have to go to JFK Boulevard to go down the ramp. They don't all have ramps. I, I'm sorry. I don't, well, I disagree with you. The good news is we actually are halfway there because we already got rid of six street accesses with uh, had steps that now are just total ramp. Okay, so you know we can we can further look at putting the, the beach you know mats down there, but they don't go all the way down to the water's edge. I understand. We don't have water's edge even at Wayne's. And most of all, you have services that are provided to you. Just pick up the phone, and they will get a beach chair down. You, you can actually reserve the chair. Mm -hmm. There's a process to reserve it to the clerk's office. And if it's taken, then. Well, no, that, that's why you would reserve it. But that's, that, 
you got there, there's there's a point in which we have to have punch over responsibility. We'll provide you with the service, we'll provide you with the equipment, but now we can't have a trooper standing there watching your chair. You have to secure it. And all the other people who are having problems getting to the beach. We have a neighbor who hasn't been to the beach in two summers because she can't get their sheet. The soft sand. Well, That's why I'd like to leave this wheelchair here. I, 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 I am personally dealing with my wife in a wheelchair. I, I, I don't need to, I, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be, I, I'm dealing with it myself. Okay, so I, I understand what you're talking about. My wife loves going to the beach, but you know, she has two broken legs and she's confined to a wheelchair right now. And trying to manage to get her to the beach, I realize it's a challenge. Okay, if I may um, kind of revisit the bulkhead situation. That initial meeting where so many people showed up was motivated by people along the bay and they chose not to ally with the citizens group or with the SIA. They came and spoke as individuals. I did follow up at meetings and say, how's the study going on behalf of them? Um, I think that Again, sitting here tonight, I would have loved to have been able to see what red things or what squares you were talking about. I cannot understand why these things can't be projected so that the people in the audience can see them. I think that we have a responsibility to notify each Bay front owner and, dare I say, the people on the other side of Bayview also about this study. It was, it was commissioned, Mayor Colombo, you were, you were uh, advocating, I believe, for the study so that we knew what we were talking about and, and you were in the thinking out loud mode talking about possibly a way to finance some sort of, but we did know what we were talking about. And Mr. Farrell, just let me finish, Mr. Farrell was here that night and he pointed out, as Paul said, the problems with the marsh, the problems up at the Deauville end where the water will seek out the lowest thing. So to go from three to four feet to eight feet is a radical thing and Mr. Young talked about the implications of trying to get to the other side and all of that. But all of this needs to be discussed with people who live that all the time. And I urge you to have a public meeting now that and people that's are our back plan. in town. But today, we were, we're reviewing the information that came out of the survey. That's why right. nothing has been done. Mm -hmm. But it would be wonderful if the, if the Bay owners had access to this link and they knew about it and, and you could meet with them. I would think even meeting with them that's, that, that's exactly. I don't think that's. No, until the day this was a work product. This is the first we've seen it. Okay. I mean, but the implication it, was. It was going to. Paul Dietrich said earlier. I mean, that it was going to be put on our web page, and available. And, and I mean, we said we're going to notify all the property owners Thank you. and I have a meeting. So I, 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 I think, think that's. I think that. that's great, and I think it would be wonderful if yeah. they could sit with you and talk about it before there was an open forum and that they that they could understand it. Uh, and yes, the whole town is impacted when the water does come through and we can certainly have a town hall meeting as we've had in the past um, at the firehouse or, or wherever you choose to have it. Well, the, the problem is is that the, the population that had been here with the original request, they're not all bay owner, they're, they're not all people that have properties there either. So we, and, and I said from the very beginning, I, I do have concern for the people that ultimately will be assessed this. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, it's easier to say you're two blocks away and say, build the bulkhead, um, but you're not going to be assessed the amount of money that's going to, this, and, and you've heard it's a significant amount of money uh, to do what, what we're, right. we're talking about. So. And, and as far as the coastal A zone misunderstanding, um, the people didn't find out about it. It was unfortunate. But there were people on the bay who, who didn't even know that there was a meeting being held to, to talk about it because there wasn't any organized way of letting everyone know. So as long as everybody's in on it, you know, however you choose to do it, um, I think it would be wonderful if, if they could have an understanding of, of what this means. And I think what you said, Mr. Young, about the steps and, and the heights and to get down to your boat and riparian rights and all that, um, they're pretty knowledgeable of, of that kind of information, but um, certainly needs to be talked about. Um, all I'm saying is that before you go from seven to eight or 
or however the planning board or whatever the process is, it would be uh, would be great to it to involve homeowners. Um, also at that meeting, there was a resident who asked about traffic uh, safety on Neptune. That's the street that goes parallel with the beach, and I believe it's <coughs> going to be revisited. Have we talked about a traffic study. We're, we're going to. There's no sense to now that the summer season has just started. Uh, probably in a couple of weeks, I'll be putting the traffic counter out there to Great. start taking a look at that. Okay. And in the meantime, is there anything that can be done to slow it down? No. First, we have to decide on if it's a problem. If it's a problem? Yes. If it's a problem, because people's perception of someone speeding down the street would be a lot different than the data that we get back. So he's going to put a, 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 a counter out there. And check to see what the speeds are that are in the area. And that'll be in a couple of weeks, you said? I'm probably going to wait at least a couple of weeks. You know, there's no sense putting out one now because right. I'm not going to get. Right. I was just asked to make sure that. that it's still on your it is. horizon. Okay. Uh, and the last thing I'd like to ask about is the playground. Um, where, is it finished? Uh, we, I believe the surface was not supposed to be mulch, and now we have mulch. There was talk of it being the spongy uh, surface. Yes, um, that was originally looked at, considered, uh, but due to budgetary uh, overruns, that soft surface that you were talking about was not installed. Uh, we made strides to install the mulch, and as you have probably seen, uh, we also put a retaining wall around that to maintain that so that it doesn't go out in the street, as we've had with past issues in past years. Uh, and of course, we've elevated the entire the entire. Uh, at this point, yes, it's completed. I think we have to discuss about one more small section of fencing uh, that has to go in there, uh, and we're also entertaining a few additional. Uh, rides for, for the kids. In so, the right, so section. we didn't gain anything in equipment. I'm sorry, well, I think we that did that not that's gain still anything over. That's what we're talking yeah. about. The, the equipment is not finalized at this point. Correct. We're looking into additional. And will, will there be access to the bulkhead, as in um, the ability to fish from the bulkhead or to, right now that fence is the fence is locked, and that was because Dennisville Fence Company uh, suggested it to be locked uh, so that the concrete uh, base of each one of those fence sections could properly set and harden uh, rather than trying to have people traverse that gate. So, yes, that will eventually be open. So, there's a gate in that. There is a gate in the back, okay. correct? Thank you. And that bulkhead is at 7 feet or 7.7? It's actually 8.2. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the Township Committee? Hello, I'm Blanche Adams. I'm at 330 Woodbine Road in Steelman Town, um, Upper Township, and I'm here representing the Upper Township Business Association. Um, we, uh, at a recent board meeting, we discussed two issues that I was asked to bring um, here tonight before the Township Committee, um, and they involved the uh, town center of Beasley's Point, Marmora, and particularly two properties, and the one property is at the end of Route 9 by the Tuckahoe Inn, where the bridge is no longer there, the Beasley's Point Bridge. It's just such an eyesore with the uh, barricades up, and we were wondering what are the plans for that? So can we make it look nicer to the people that are visiting the businesses there? Can we take advantage of the wonderful view of the Great Egg Harbor Bay? Like, are there any plans there? Is that up to the township or the state? And what can we do as businesses to kind of move anything forward that you might have in mind? Well, um, the, I met with the DOT about two months ago, and they have a project where they're redesigning um, some improvements along Route 9, and they will be addressing um, removing the barricades, changing the traffic pattern down there, uh, formalizing the parking down along, essentially in front of the Tucko Inn, and uh, you know, putting a better terminus to Route 9 
there um, to make it not so, you know, not the concrete barriers and just abruptly ending like that. Okay. All right, so you're working with the DOT and that's going to be oncoming. Yes. Okay. And that's probably, DOT doesn't move very fast. Yes. <laughs> the fact that we got Paul talking to him is a plus. It's going to look yeah. a hundred. It's going to be. What I saw on paper is going to look a hundred percent better than it looks right now. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's so it's great. It's going to be all painted down there, parking spots, everything. It's going to be turned into like a parking lot. Okay. But but there will not be. There's no plans for fishing gear or you know access down there. But, you know, they're still trying to figure out the bulkhead issue and stuff like that. But at, at most, they'll probably remove the bulkhead and just slope the ground off. Okay. All right, great. That'll turn it from a, an eyesore to an attractive place to be. Um, and then the second property is the old gas station on Roosevelt Boulevard. Um, and I know that that's a whole nother issue, but right now there's a pile of trash that's been there for weeks. Can we get that removed? Is zoning, officer, is zoning officers aware of it and has sent the property owner notice? Actually, Ed, you're going I was in a meeting this morning with Ed. And it's already directed the Public Works Department to pick it up because it's an eyesore in the gateway of our community. Yes. <laughs> so there's only an officer spending money. I found that while I was talking to the so they will be taken care of. All right, great. We may put a mattress in the pot, though, and take care of it. No, I thought that was a mattress there. We have been discussion, in discussion on that line. Uh, there's some issues, uh, environmental issues and stuff that is making it a little bit more difficult to, I don't know how much the, the it owners say. and the owner's attorney is not responding to our inquiries. Um, uh, for the last six to nine months it's been, we'll get back to you. <coughs> I, I had a discussion with them about a month ago and they're still, they're still having issues of not wanting to assume any future responsibility if there's a monetary amount to uh, that's not covered by grants or, or other means to, to pay the balance. And I think that's what they're still trying to... Uh, but they are responsible. Work. Right, and, that, and that's one reason why we haven't... But when I've had discussions with the attorney, we, we acknowledge that, and uh, I guess that he's got to talk to his client, but right. until the client agrees to move forward, it's in limbo. All right, great. Thank you for addressing those two issues. Is there anyone else that would like to address the township committee? Yeah, okay. the same one. Sure. Can you come up to the mic just because we're, we're taking this? As to um, the frequent remarks about taking personal responsibility, um, we certainly know that we have personal responsibility, but this is not just for us. Just having this experience has opened our eyes to what handicapped people do go through. And we would like the mats for every single person who either lives in Strathmere or visits Strathmere who would have accessibility to the beach. And the only thing that happened when our issue came up is that it opened our eyes to how serious the lack of accessibility is. So please don't say, you know, it's your turn to take personal responsibility. We do that. But we would like every single person who comes to Strathmere to be able to go to the beach. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Last comments? Okay, hearing none, thank you all for your comments this evening. Uh, we'll close the public portion and entertain a motion to go into executive. <coughs> I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. The matters are personnel and potential litigation with Whipperill Campground. 
I also include in my motion the estimated time and the circumstances under which the discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to employment and personnel matters, such discussions will be made public if and when formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. With respect to litigation matters, such discussions will be made public when litigation is complete and the applicable appeal period has expired. Second, let's call the roll, please. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. From Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Commissioner Carey? Have a great evening, everyone. Please drive safely home. Enjoy the rest of the week.